Oh, oh there we welcome, go. Jerry. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, kind of a boomer with this kind of shit. So, anyways. Um, so, I guess we can get started, guys. What, what did you guys just have, by the way? Who, who was just presenting? We just had Juvin. Oh, awesome. Nice. All right. Yeah, she, she's, she's got a very, very nice uh, visual style. I actually worked with Juvin at Partisan, so we're, we're pretty close. Um, anyways, I can start sharing my screen. And uh, I, I think how I'm going to start presenting this is um, how all of my other profs that critiqued my portfolio looks through this portfolio. And also, like, they're basically trying to re replicate how they would look through portfolios in, like, a um, selective setting when they're actually kind of choose um, who's going to get into the program. So let's just get started with the cover page. And then I have... CV, first project, project modeling, design logic, sectional perspective, model studies, second project, part T diagram, design logic, third diagram, I mean, third project, uh, just more modeling, fourth project, drawings and details, model photo, fifth project, uh, the room precedent, design logic, more details, fabrication and production, and modular design with the pods. And then this is like the sixth somewhat project of, you know, photography and amending on this photo. And then I, that, that's, that's the rest of my portfolio. So that's roughly the amount of time that you guys will each get for uh, each portfolio. And that's not a lot of time. And um, what I would say is that, yeah, like you just have to pick the best images and you have to pick the best drawings that you have because they're not going to spend that much time looking at it. Like, in fact, like they're not going to read all this stuff, but I, I still have it, right? Like you still put it in as like a tertiary thing. Um, if they're interested and if they want to learn more about it. So uh, to get in more detail with this kind of portfolio, I think what I kind of focused on is the consistency. Um, I deliberately made it so that there's these part two diagrams that kind of follow in every single project. And that kind of ties everything together because that really rationalizes my design thinking. And it's very simple, like these six different images go from start to finish of my design. So it, you get a very easy sense or like a very simple sense of how this is all generated. So here again is, is, is the same kind of layout with the same kind of idea where you're starting from, you know, ground zero, and then you're just, you know, extruding this and then you're putting this on that and then you're cutting this. And basically it's, it's a very simple way of showing your design logic. And of course, like, of course, I didn't like think about this when I actually designed this building, but it's something that is very simple. It's like, I, I hate to reference big here, but it's like BRK angles groups, right? Like when they show off their projects in this kind of style where um, it's very simple, it's very digestible, which is why it's so popular because everyone knows how this building works, even though they just made it so easy. And it's probably complicated as hell. Um, and basically all of my visuals are usually black and white just to keep it more consistent because a lot of the renders that I ended up doing were black and white anyways, like this image. Um, so then I, I just decided to stick with a black and white theme. It just seemed like it was a more cleaner look. Um, and then I used like orange as my highlight, but just in very rare cases. And of course, like in every one of these um, introductions, it's, it's very consistent. You know, so you have this site, uh, image very rough like this is just a quick google screenshot really uh, just to give it some context and then you have the money shot already in the very first um, page of the project so basically that that stays consistent throughout each project and i think that's what really ties down everything together um, and what's very helpful is for you to have these pages where the reader or the audience clearly knows okay, so this is the residential housing project and not the social housing project. Um, because 
Now this is the design build project. So being able to articulate and organize uh, your portfolio in a way where you can clearly understand that this is the beginning of a new project is very important. Uh, you don't ever want to have it go to a point where they're looking through and then they're like, oh, wait, this is not the same project anymore. Where's the, the first part of that project? Um, and then what else? Also, okay, so this, this is another thing. I, I was saying how I started this all in the summer and basically I already had a good idea of how I want my portfolio to look, but there was a huge process that I had to go through and I'll show you guys what I did, um, like what I added on and what was existing beforehand when I started. So this whole page is new. Like this is the first render that I did when I started my portfolio. Um, and then moving on, this is actually older because this is the stuff that we actually had to do for researching the, the house for ARC uh, 361. And the modeling was done before, but this whole page is new. Like the part T, the, the diagram on the very right and the elevations, they're all brand new, uh, for the portfolio. This is also brand new for the portfolio. The page on the left, all these models of course are already existing, but the model on the very right, I actually 3d printed this and then, uh, made a site and everything just roughly, uh, for the portfolio. I think um, it's very important to redo a lot of these projects and just add in more detail because like before I didn't actually have a physical overall model. I just had little bits and pieces of it. Uh, so I think adding something like this here is very crucial because you get to see the model in its entirety and that it's all fully built. Um, and then of course, design build, there's nothing to add here except for visuals. Um, the only visuals that I really got from design build uh, out of that class was like detail drawings, which is not something that is digestible for um, portfolio, which is why I added in this part two diagram. And then I added in this construction schematic diagram, which is really just an exploded AXO. Uh, and it really shows like the layering of this construction method. And of course it's so simple, but it's something that it's, it adds more to the project. And I'm, I'm quite proud of this drawing. Um, and of course this, this I added and also this, this whole page is basically all new. Um, this is existing because it's, it's my experience with partisans and we, we did our take on the Google sidewalk. This was actually going to be built, but of course, Google sidewalk kind of, uh, retracted on their offer. So now that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and of course, this is a good idea of how you can implement your thesis project into a portfolio. So this is the fourth year design thesis project and for design thesis, uh, the first half of it is all research, which seems quite boring, but we are actually encouraged to work through this research with visuals and with documenting things through drawings. So I was able to make this really interesting model, at least in my opinion of like this infinite grid village and, um, you know, just more visuals to back it up. And then of course, this, um, is a very compelling shot, but this is all existing of course, because of like, because, okay, this is also something where I want to touch up on later where, um, I didn't change anything here because this is fourth year project. This is fourth year level. Um, so with this project, of course, this didn't really change, but this party diagram is completely new so that it, you know, matches with everything else. And, um, yeah, everything else. Like a lot of this is new, like this, probably the, the only thing that's existing is this drawing right here. Um, and it's, it's always nice to add in, uh, your personal touch to the portfolio. So like for me, like my hobby is to travel around and take photos. So I'd like to share that because I think it is a way of showing like your artistic skills almost in a sense or interests. So. I ended off with this image of, uh, Iceland, but yeah, uh, did, did it just say that we only have five minutes left? Yes, but Sadi is adding five, two more minutes. So, uh, okay. <laughs> we can, we can go through some questions. Sorry about that. I kind of lingered on with this 
No, that was very helpful, I think. It's good. It's very interesting to see like how much is new and like added on to the coursework. Yeah, a lot of it's added on. <laughs> and like, uh, I want to add that um, what was really important that I kind of answered for someone else last class was, I mean, the, the last group was basically, you should always look to improve your projects because even though you have really well-rounded like 30 projects per se, uh, say like 461 and 462, there's still a lot of things to work on because what you're submitting is basically an intro to your fourth year level work. And what you did in 361 and 362 is just the beginning of third year work. So there, there's still like, I'm sure that you, you guys still have grown a lot through one year and like, you know, representationally and design, uh, design wise. So just use that and take that to advan to your advantage. Like you, you, like when you look through your portfolio, it should all be fourth year or third year above level work. Like, um, there's no reason for you to put in, say, your 361, but it looks like a second year level work. You know what I mean? And also, don't be too against putting in second year work, but uh, I would recommend if you can, try to um, definitely, you have to rework those in a way where they all look cohesive and they all look to the same level. That's very helpful. So we have a bit more time because they added on five minutes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? You can speak up or put it in the chat. Oh, Naomi's asking, what rendering program did you use for your render? V-Ray. I use V-Ray. But, but really, um, what people don't get is that you spend like 20% on V-Ray and you spend 80% on Photoshop. So uh, yeah, never think that an image is done after V-Ray export. Um, yeah. Cool. And also uh, what I wanna add on is um, never be more hesitant and like complacent with your work. Like you can always add in more. Like the thing is what I was kind of uh, hoping for, like what I was aiming at like, even though I, my goal was to get into UFT, my, my like aim was to Harvard. Like the only reason, like I was able to get like a full on like scholarship to UFT, it was because I was aiming at the Harvard level. So even if I didn't get into Harvard because my marks weren't there, like I don't need to really pay anything for masters now because I tried so hard trying to perfect my portfolio. So never try to like, never be complacent with like, okay, this will get me into like UFT for sure. Because more often than not, like you're, you're, you guys will be able to, you know, put in the work and then have a really good shot at getting to UFT masters, but, you know, always go above and beyond and try to, you know, get that scholarship money because, you know, it's good money. Why, why are you passing it out? Right. Yeah. That's some great advice. Um, we have some more questions in chat and we have a bit more time to answer them as well. Awesome. Um, hey, Kristen asks, any tips for Photoshop? Any tips for Photoshop? Actually, I mean, th the thing is, uh, biggest tip, start with a reference image. Biggest, biggest tip, tip. Because like the thing is, like all of this stuff too, like it's it's not just done out of nothing. You know, there's always a reference to every image. So start off with a reference image and then, and also try to practice when you're, when you're on Instagram and you're looking at these super cool renderings, think about how it's done. You know, like how is the lighting done? Is this done in V-Ray? Is this done in Photoshop? And like trying to break down every layer to the best of your abilities so that you can start incorporating that into your own work. Um, and also like there, it's, it's, there's a very limited amount of stuff on YouTube that uh, teaches you how to render, uh, especially like architecture stuff. But once you start comparing and looking at um, other people's work and then maybe even reaching out to them to, to ask like, what's, you know, how did you do this and how did you do that? Like it's you, like for me, like how I built this skill was more so just seeing everyone else's work and then comparing it to my own. And then also just, picking in like bits and pieces of everything, you know, like how, how do you set up the camera and the perspective of like the shot, you know, like 
setting up the camera and like having like the right angle with the right frame is already in it of itself like a huge course and it's it's something that you guys have to build up over time um and of course photography i think helped me uh a bit easier like also looking at an image and, and like for me like my style is more of like a hyper realistic rendering style and um you have to just keep on training your eye you have to keep on training your eye to look at these images and see how it's done and then try it yourself um, that's the biggest tip, I think. And of course, like using a reference image, um, because if, without a reference image, you're really just like shooting, shooting in the dark. Like there's, there's nothing, I mean, maybe there is something cool that comes out of it, but you're more productive finding a reference image and then working from there. Yeah, that's a good tip. Okay. I think Sadie's telling us to wrap it up. Okay. Um, yeah, but I think the last question is pretty good. Like, what's your opinion on the Daniels Masters? Maybe you can just give a quick opinion. Yeah, OK, then, sure. Yeah. Uh, Daniels Masters, it's it's very intuitive. It's very simple. It's it's because half the class is like first year students coming into grad school. And half of it, it's like fourth year students like us that like go in. And then this whole difference makes it so that it's very easy for the fourth year students, like like the previous fourth year students at Daniels, rather than like the because people get like random people, not random, but like there's like history backgrounds and like psychology background people that go into architecture. So they don't know anything. First year is going to be a breeze for uh, most of you guys. But I, I think it's still nice to like, for me, I'm still putting in like master's level of work. And it's, it's work that I've done better than my fourth year stuff, just because I'm putting in the effort, even though the course itself is like arc two, 201, you know, it's, it's very simple, but you can make it as, uh detail and as high quality as you want based on your skill level just make sure you're not stooping too low to you know everyone else's level in the first year of masters uh yeah it's it's very easy like everyone can get through it. and masters marks don't really matter as much unless if you're if you have a scholarship um because if you're trying hard you're not going to fail anything and you're going to just pass everything that is good to know yeah, once you make it to masters, you, you're not it's you're not failing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. I think it's time for the room rotations. Yeah, sounds good. That was nice talking to you guys. Yeah, thank you so much uh for sharing your portfolio and tips. No problem. All right. See you guys. I'm going to room four now, right? I believe so. Okay. Yeah.